Yeah, another draft physics video presentation. A little bit of background noise, sorry, and such. Um, so this is another version of whatever silly thinks is silly says. Uh, you know, just make up crap, ridicule other people, and then do something even worse than them. I mean, it's you know, it's such hypocrisy uh, in terms of standards. Uh, it's just. It's just such garbage. So anyway, I haven't listened to the whole video, but I'm sure there's absolutely no evidence of anything presented in this video. No reason to believe anything he's talking about. It all just suits his fantasy of how the universe works. Now, uh, this is for uh, new viewers. Uh, all right, so let's just say new viewers. Right? How many of those you get a year? 10? <laughs> you know, please. I watch a lot of so-called dissident scientists and um, you know rather than let's understand he watches doesn't really pay any attention he doesn't really watch he listens to in the background blah 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 gets a tiny portion of maybe what they're saying could never argue with any of them about any specifics because he really doesn't know what they're saying uh, do you know how uh, Bill Gates accounts for uh, magnetism that the ropes actually jump do you know that part no, I don't think you do and reply to them directly. Uh, yeah, because you're a coward. Um, you can't make a rational argument. You can't debunk anything because you know nothing about the subject. You won't do any research. And you're completely dishonest. Just facts. Which seems to be inevitably confrontational. Uh, duh. Uh, yes, there's controversies, there's arguments to be made, there's disagreements, disagreements have to be resolved. Um, I've seen you have plenty of controversy in your interactions with people on politics and other things, so yes, it comes with the territory. You're making claims, you're claiming other people are stupid or uninformed or misinformed or some other kind of accusation and you demonstrate it and prove it with no evidence, so you suck. I'm just going to ignore that and talk about my own philosophy. Yes, right, exactly. That's all you've ever done. You don't really, you won't accept any grounding axioms. You just choose to keep arguing your fairy tale. And that's it. Andrew, now, this is my system. I'm not saying this is the system of science, however. I... Uh, I'm not saying it's a system of science, however. To, to distinguish myself from everybody else, my science is good. Theirs sucks. <laughs> You're a joke to try to limit my ideas uh, to realms that don't contradict the scientific data. Right, and who are you accusing of doing this opposite thing? So, um, I mean, clearly Bill Gates doesn't care about experiments. He says it's not part of science, which is really a stupid thing to say. So, yes, he's out of the reasonable uh, realm right away. But who else? Who else are you accusing of not paying attention to data? Who? Why don't you make a direct accusation that you must accept my religious interpretation of the evidence or the experiment or I might play with you because you didn't accept that my God theory. You know, you don't accept that science says dark matter exists. So I can put it in my little pictures anywhere I want to because they say it exists even though there's no evidence that it really exists. <laughs> it's just a made up pile of crap. You know, are you allowed to just throw in, uh, multiverses in here because you say science says? Evidence says? There's no evidence saying so. None. Specifically, the scientific interpretation is fair game. Uh, yeah, right. No, no. The, 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 the fact that you claim an experiment proves something. So again, let's talk about the Eddington experiment. You demonstrate to me how it was a really good experiment. Really quality data, quality interpretation, quality everything. Why don't you just show me how that's the way science should be. An experiment never repeated, by the way, with comparable technology. Now we have two issues I'm going to talk about. First of all, I think you new viewers don't understand. I, I think what he wants people to understand is somehow he can talk about physics without ever talking about any of the physical phenomena. So he's not going to explain how a magnet works. He won't, go, he won't touch the subject, I'll guarantee. He won't talk about how current travels through wires because he won't go anywhere near some real physics subject. He'll just talk about this mushy part about what a dimension is, which is just a horse shit, right? I mean, who cares? Yeah, there's three physical dimensions. You want to pretend there's other dimensions, whatever a dimension would be, that they're somehow not directly connected to the three dimensions that are can be made out of perpendicular lines? 
that's sort of the rule of a dimension is there's room for a perpendicular line. When you run out of perpendicular lines, you run out of dimensions. That space is in every way a thing. It has qualities. Uh, uh, right, right. So you might so you, so instead of just admitting your etherists, okay, that you believe there is an ether. There was a word for that. When space is a thing, you call it ether. You don't call it pretend space or anything else. You don't call it space. You call it ether. It's not a rock, but neither is a foot. Oh, uh, so what? It's not a rock. It's jello instead. Um, it's whatever, plastique. It's uh, you know, <laughs> who cares what it is. The point is, is you've got to account for how you magically control it, okay? Um, and, you know, it turns on, it turns off. It pushes, it doesn't push. How exactly does it move electrons and protons? That's the question to ask. Okay, how does it move an electron or a proton? How does it move them? Photon and a photon is also a thing. It's a, a, a thing in which sense? Is it space? Is it what? What is it? Is it ether clumps? See, this is just so ambiguous. Space is a thing and photons are a thing. They're not the same thing. Oh, well, they're maybe the same thing. I don't know. Maybe something, th you know, this is just gibberish. This isn't physics. You're not explaining how this system of yours functions. Thing, because it has qualities that are contrary to other things or even possible configurations of it. So why don't you do that? Why don't you start with just saying what the things that you're saying you're juggling here are? What are the properties? What are the mechanical parts? We've got tires on a car. we got the sheet metal on a car, the engine, the steering wheel, the transmission. Can't you define what the hell is running your stupid universe? What do you think is a thing and what isn't a thing? What is a, 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 a composite of other things? So are quarks things? So, for example, space is three dimensions. This is a purely ontological, experiential... Uh, we, we don't need ontological and experiential words thrown in here. Who the hell needs this kind of crap? All right? I mean, there's a simple definition for what uh, the three dimensions are made out of. You take a line. The line has perpendiculars. Two of them, in fact. There, three dimensions. You're all done. Now, where are you going to try a fourth one? Where are you going to cr create a fourth line that's perpendicular to all three of the other lines? That's the rule. The right angles that these, this drawing creates, that's the rule. How do you make a fourth line that has right angles to all the other three lines? Oh, that's right, you can't. Argument, first argument, it's not two dimensions, it's not one dimension. People call it four dimensional, but that's including time. Uh, right, and there's no evidence that time is in any way perpendicularly connected to any of those three lines. So why are you calling it a dimension? So right away we can just say you don't even know how to use vocabulary. You don't call frogs elephants. They're not the same thing. If you want to say time is something, an elephant, then call it an elephant. It's not a dimension, clearly. It doesn't obey the rules of a dimension. It's not a line, and it's not perpendicular to the other three lines. So it's not a dimension. Extent space. Space of a oh, log. Oh, extent space. So there's more gibberish words. What the fuck is that? What's an extent space? What the hell? Space and then extent space. Um, of a physical thing with, with, uh, with tactile qualities that you can touch. It's three-dimensional. Right, whatever. So we can touch space. I can go get a jar of space. I'll go out into space, you know, like uh, around the moon or something. There's like a... 18 tour vacuum out there and I'll go get me a jar of space and you're saying there oh if I brought it back to earth I have something special in that jar I have something in the jar well no the truth is I have virtually nothing in the jar I might have a couple of tiny little atoms in there but there's nothing in the fucking jar there's no forces there's no nothing there's just what's in the jar now we experience it as three dimensions uh, just like we experience uh, energies of light as color. Oh, whatever. Like we experience it. No, it is three dimensions. It's not us experiencing it and causing it to be three dimensions. It's three physical dimensions made out of real things called lines. So all you have to do, all you have to accept as an elemental function is the idea that there are places in space and that there's a line between them that you could draw. And once you've made that line, the obligation in terms of creating dimensions is just to say, can I, is there any, 
is there any perpendicular to that line? And then you figure out, oh yeah, there's two of them. And now you're all done. You have your three um, dimensions of space. It's no more complicated than that. You're trying to make it into some sort of mystical thing that, oh wow, how did it do that? Well, it did it because there's a simple rule that allowed it to do that. Who knows, maybe we're translating space into this three dimensions. Oh, I mean, isn't this just, we're translating space into three dimensions. I mean, what, what is this? Why is this mysterious to anybody? Yes, the reality goes in these three physical dimensions that have everything to do with standard geometry. The difference between a square and a cube. The, you know, the difference between a circle and a sphere. I mean, these are all concepts that are really easy to understand. But when you start saying, well, there's fourth dimensions, well, they, that's where it all falls apart. How do you connect to the sphere and have a fourth dimension? Oh, that's right, you can't. You're all done. You're all full up on dimensions. You've run out of them. Doesn't matter. The point is, three dimensions is different from two. It's different from one. Space, duh. <clears throat> so again, even this argument that space could even make one-dimensional reality, or space could make two-dimensional reality. There's no evidence that it could have done anything like that. Uh, you're just imagining it. The fact is, is this is how reality exists, is that it expands. You can have this idea of distance, and you can create distance in any direction. So these are just directions. I mean, dimensions are just a way of generalizing uh, direction. I mean, direction, the opposite directions, that way versus that way. Well, those are two sides of a dimension, and I can have a third dimension that's perpendicular to both those dimensions. Nothing, nothing complicated at all. So the fact that reality doesn't care about saying you can only go this way and that way, well, I'd almost say, duh. It does have a quality of volume, right? So it's not nothing. If, if there's nothing... In oh, right, again, so it's not nothing. So what would nothing have? If I did make a big pile of nothing, a vacuum, so I ha let's say I have your dopey space. I have a bunch of ether. And what if I made a hole in the ether and I made it about this big? Are you saying that because there's a hole in the ether and there's nothing in the hole that there isn't distance still in the hole? I would argue, of course, there still is. I don't need your stupid stuff to make distance. I can have distance in nothing quite easily. It's easily imaginable. Because, frankly, that's the world we live in. That's what space is. Nothing. And there's bits of something going the speed of light in it. In the volume, that would be fine. There would still be a volume. Now, what we know from experiment is that... that okay, he just said it. What we know from experiment. Now, is he going to cite any experiments? He will not. I promise you, he will not cite any of the evidence for this wooey crap. So he says we know it. He doesn't say, well, we think, or I personally think the experiment demonstrates. No, he just says we know it. Like, like the experiment is that clear. What a pile of crap. That volume actually always has energy in it. Any uh, so again, so where's the, pr the experiment that did that? So he's basically saying that I can take a jar full of empty space, bring it home, and I can, you know, cook some marshmallows because it has energy in it. What a pile of crap. It only has energy in it if, I, if, if there were some photons that got trapped in my jar or something, right? So the jar has to be made of something reflective, so whatever I catch in it, then I can take back home, <laughs> right? The only thing that's in it is the force that's flying through it. Just if I go outside, I can take a jar full of air, and it can have some bugs in it, right? But that's it. It's air and bugs. Well, space is space, and then forces and matter. Those are the things moving through the space. There's force bits, and then there's matter bits. And that's what the evidence indicates, and there isn't any evidence indicating anything else. The volume of space. And since it's an excellent thing, as materialists, we should... Uh, an excellent thing as materialists. <laughs> so this is more crap. You know, just more crap. He's a materialist because he's saying there's a, a thing called space that's a substance and it has waves in it or something. And he calls that materialism. Well, I'd say that's pretty far from materialism. That's 
um, you know, you're, you're to make to make nothing into something, you know, is like taking the word materialism way too far. Assume that there's energy involved in its existence. It can't so, so more of this crap. No, what, what is quite obvious is there's energy in the universe moving the speed of light, and it's in the form of photons and magnetism and sunlight and all kinds of things. It has all kinds of forms, and that's the stuff that moves things. Force says. Force is moving the speed of light. So why don't you, you could do a video just explaining why uh, it moves the speed of light. Why? <laughs> is that, what, is that the speed of ether? It'd be made of nothing. Why? Because nothing is made of nothing. Oh, so that makes sense. Nothing's made of nothing. Yes, that's exactly what it's made out of. That's right. So he thinks there must be an infinite amount of something, you know, I guess. The something just goes forever and ever and ever and ever. And there's no such thing as nothing. There's only forever something. Nothing would be no space at all, because space is one of the things that exists. No space at all. So again, he's saying that we have to live in his geometry. That realistically, okay, so we already know that, well, there's stuff on Earth called water, and that that's a dense collection of atoms. And that atmosphere is a less dense collection of atoms. And that there's things called space between those atoms, you know, the bits, the electrons, and the protons. And then we go into space, and there's even less atoms. And, and so he's saying that, no, that's not the reality. The reality is, is there's this ether stuff, and these are somehow clumps of ether or something. Clumps of jello. So it's jello, or it's oatmeal with lumps in it. I, it's, I'm just arguing it's a completely useless argument in the sense that just account for the forces in the jello. Account for the lumps and account for what moves the lumps. All right, so if you want to believe it's it's waves, I'm just going to argue, well, obviously they don't spread. I can make a laser beam, the waves aren't spreading, so they're really not waves, are they? How, how do you have your selective perturbation? In one case, the perturbation spreads. I throw the pebble into the, the lake, the waves spread out. Somehow I throw another pebble and it magically just makes waves in one direction. Why don't you explain those two things? If you can tell me how your ether theory accomplishes that, um, well then maybe you can make some sort of reasonable argument for the necessity of an ether. But an ether doesn't explain that. An ether doesn't work. If you make your ether into having any kind of geometry, like all the other substances, like water and like air, there's pressure and there's arrangements of the molecules, they they become arranged in a specific way. Um, well, why, why don't you demonstrate how you could do a straight line in that substance then? Because we know those exist. So, so how is the geometry of your checkerboard of ether, how does its geometry work? Doesn't the diagonal lines end up being too long? In the universe where there isn't nothing, it exists. It is space. It's the medium, it is the realm, the dome. Right, so again, why not call it ether then? Why not be clear what you're arguing? Why not be honest? We, we have the word for it. I mean, the word was already invented by Maxwell and all those people were already using the word, the ether, the holy ether. So why don't you do your holy ether crap? And God created the ether. Main in which an object can exist. Space also turns out from experimental physics Okay, so another lie. <clears throat> so another statement where he says he's proven something, or they've proven something, or they have a ton of evidence for it. Uh, you are not allowed to disbelieve us because we say so. That's all this is. You're not allowed to disbelieve us because we say so. Not because you prove so. Not because you demonstrate so. Not because you made a rational argument proving it. Again, it's all just made up. Okay, it's all just engrandized hyperball nonsense. They just say the two-slit experiment. They don't analyze the two-slit experiment. They don't explain how the multi-slit creates images. They don't explain why the two-slit creates two patterns. They don't explain what splits the photon in half in the single slit. Totally not matching water. They just lie and say, look, we proved it. You have to believe because we say so. To have shape and character. To be 
it's possible to distort it, which means waves can go through the space. The space has other... <clears throat> yeah, whatever, fine. So you, instead of saying there's a force moving through, through space, you're saying the force is a bending in the space. Fine. Now, bend, now, now could use that theory and explain quantum mechanics. <clears throat> well, now you're going to have to quantize your space. You're going to have to turn your space into little clumps. Because that's the only way you're going to quantize your ether. You're going to have to turn it into particles again. Well, what's between the particles? Particle glue? Qualities to it that we've discovered. So we've discovered again. So more statements, more ambiguous reference to some sort of evidence that they don't really have. Just the fact they don't have evidence for any of these claims. I agree with those that say that it's wrong to call these other things dimensions. The magnetic field at a point in space can mathematically be called a dimension, just like time can. But in reality, it's at one of the three-dimensional points of space. Well, why don't you explain what it's doing and how it's there and what, how it functions and how you can wave it and how waves make any sense. How do waves explain a magnet? Oh, they don't at all. There's no evidence that fucking magnets are waving anything. So why don't you show me a diagram of a magnet and show me why, it's, why you think it's waving something. When clearly what it's doing is creating straight line force just like a light bulb. And the fact that it's it's an amount makes it seem like well to draw it you have to draw an arrow and then you're drawing over other parts of space. Well, yeah, mathematically you end up wanting to give it its own dimension because it's a free variable. At any given point in space, there is a particular magnetic field and gravitation. All right, right. So now we're up to 400 fields again. So so there's all these magical different substances in the ether. So there's like the 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 blue substance, then the green substance, and the red substance, and the purple, I mean all these 400 different substances, and each substance affects a particle differently, so only the green particles are affected by the green substance, and only the blue particles are affected by the blue substance, and you don't even have rules for how they're, they interact. So again, none of these people can draw you a picture of a, a coherent picture of a magnet and explain what it is. I have done that. I've pointed out the obvious, that it's a filter. It doesn't do any work. That's why it doesn't have to produce any energy, because the energy is already in the field. It's already pressurizing, and all you're doing is either um, <clears throat> it, um, multiplying the pressure in some places, increasing pressure, and decreasing in other places. Same amount of pressure comes in, variable pressure comes out in terms of red and green or whatever, however you want to interpret it, because the two particles react differently to the pressure. There, simple explanation. That's where the energy comes from. The same place the cosmic background radiation comes from. The universe is full of BBs, and there's shit in there that's getting bounced around by them. Simple explanation. Spatial field and so on. So you have space created from like basically multiple layers interwoven uh, factors of all the different kinds of quantum field from the nuclear so these are fields again that don't go this way and this way or flat like normal fields they're fields going all over the place in somehow three dimensions it doesn't make any sense what do you mean how so and how do these fields convey pressure in three dimensions you, you can't keep using these you know silly two-dimensional look I stretch the fabric there's three dimensions, so account draw it in three dimensions. How do you draw your stretching of the fabric in three dimensions? Oh, that's right, you draw it as a convergence. You draw it as the opposite of a light bulb. Straight lines converging on a point. That's how you draw it. That's how they teach it. That's the reality. So what's your, what's your interpretation of their interpretation? How would you draw your space in three dimensions converging as something other than a bunch of straight lines going to one point. Forces, gravitational uh, and electromagnetic forces. And the fact that this can be distorted and there can be measurements of this distortion means there can be waves in space and that's what all of our photon. So again, there's no explanation of how anything else is a wave, how magnetism automatically waves until we wave it. Until we put the magnet in, take the magnet out. Put the magnet in, take the magnet out. We wave it. There's no waves in the magnet. 
So again, most of these forces, you can, all of these forces can be explained as straight line forces that end up creating curves because they're balanced, because there's so much coming from this end and so much coming from this end. And it's just like that string. You can, you can have two straight pieces of string create a curved line. The curve is an illusion. The real forces are straight line forces. The inverse square law is what straight lines create. This is all just a little fairy tale. A, a, a silly misinterpretation of reality. A misinterpretation of the evidence. Any potential gravitons, you know, whatever is mediating the, the strong nuclear. Right, whatever is, whatever this, whatever that, he will provide us no explanation for the fundamental physical phenomenon. The real physical phenomenon are charge and magnetism and gravity. He won't explain a single one of them in any coherent way. Again, if he draws his gravity in three dimensions, it's going to look just like a light bulb in reverse. Here in weak nuclear forces, these are all from uh, waves going through the complete, all of the quantum fields, which are not just embedded in space, but literally that is what space consists of. Right. Then again, what waves where? The only thing there's that has a frequency are photons. That's it. That's why they're called photons, by the way. So all the forces have the same speed. The only one that has any kind of wave built into it is, in fact, photons. The rest of them don't have to wave at all. And they're still forces. There's no gravity frequency. Do you think there's a frequency of gravity emission? Is there any evidence at all that gravity turns on, gravity turns off, gravity turns on, gravity turns off? Any evidence at all there's a frequency to gravity? No, no evidence at all. Just like magnets, no evidence of frequency whatsoever. So space is a thing, very important, and now you know. Right, now I know absolutely nothing. We got no facts at all. We got no citations to any experiments or any evidence. We just got a stupid box drawn in three dimensions, which we could all figure out for ourselves. And it doesn't even have the little right angles drawn on it, which is the important fact that all the dimensions are at right angles to each other. Perpendicular. That's the fact. That's the important distinguishing fact. And that that's all there's room for is just those three lines. Can't draw any more. Sorry. I mean, you could extend those lines all the way through, of course. Now, another thing I want to talk about is, is monopoles. I remember wondering many years ago, um, when they said, oh, there's no such thing as a monopole, what they even meant, right? To me, the first question isn't, is it... That's not what they said, so obviously they believe in electric monopoles. They just have assumed that um, magnets are something different than electricity, <laughs> that they're something different than making them out of electrons and protons, that electrons and protons define magnetism. Correct or not, but what does it even mean? So I'm just going to stick to what it means. Um, basically, the issue is... You can build a machine. Hilarious. Stern Gerlach is not moving electrons or protons. It's moving atoms. Atoms go through the experiment. So I bet he won't even get that right. They're magnets. They're not monopoles. Um, like a Stern Gerlach um, device. And you can fire a stream of particles. Or okay, here we go. Particles. They're not particles. They're silver atoms. So why why are you you know playing this game? Uh, a, a stream of particles. They're atoms. They're whole fucking atoms and ions. That's what they are. There's no evidence of anything other than that going through the experiment. It's atoms. Drop them using gravity, but you know they're usually fired uh, through this device. They're not fired. The device is the the uh, silver is heated until it flies into pieces. Okay, and that's how they move the atoms. And it's uh, you know a pair of um, uh, the ends of magnets oriented so that uh, if it's a neutral particle, it'll just shoot right through. Now, if it so more nonsense, right? It's a neutral particle. They're all atoms. There are no neutral particles. There are no any of this crap. They're atoms, and atoms always have electrons on the outside and protons on the inside. For one fact. And clearly atoms, if you arrange, if you figure out there's an electron here and a, an electron over here, and there's a proton here that, yes, from this point of view, the atom will look like a positive force. But from the place where the electron is, it's going to look more negative. 
That's the simple mathematics. Now, you don't think electrons are a thing. You think they're some sort of bubbly, orby thingy that's, you know, that's not a thing. I, I have no argument for that. It's a thing when it's in an atom, and then it spreads when it's in the atom. But when I shoot it out, it's not a thing anymore. It's a single little, uh, tiny, infinitesimally small little hunk of, of mass uh, that has momentum. So it's an individual piece of momentum when it leaves the atom, but somehow when it's in the atom, it's some sort of spherical blah, 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 that somehow has a magnetic moment of its own, even though it's a negative charge, even though it doesn't have any poles, somehow it creates a magnetic moment where, yeah, that's right, there's a space between two electrons and you can see the proton then. And that's all this is about. This is just about, say, if you had a sun and you put big giant planets really close to it, circling it. And the planets would would drift over the sun, right? They just spin around the sun, and the sun would blink on and blink off and blink on and blink off. Well, that's just like it's saying, I'm positive, I'm negative. I'm positive, I'm negative. That's a magnetic moment. And I don't believe they exist, but I'm just saying the principle is from different perspectives, the thing can look a different way. And you could argue a neutron is a red end is a magnet and all you do is spin the magnet fast enough and you won't be able to tell it's a magnet anymore but you're getting just as much positive as you are negative over time so if you only receive what it's doing over a certain period of time that's long enough not a plank bit but a longer period of time and that's how you average what it is all you'll see is both charges you'll see nothing so you'll call it neutral because it can't be positive or negative because it's spinning fast enough to fool you. Period. End of that subject. Well, whatever. This, he has no clue. So again, he hasn't accurately described the experiment. Do we Have we demonstrated that? He's used the word particle, and then he used, uh, what was the other word he used? Uh, you know, and then, then implied that somehow these particles are charged in a specific way. Well, obviously, they're ions. So, yes, some of them are positive ions and some of them are negative ions. The atoms. It has a magnetic field, it will be bent one way or the other. Now, because of the mathematics of this, if you had a purely charged particle that didn't have, it didn't have a north end and a south end, but it was just all negative, it would shoot through and hit a particular place on the screen. <clears throat> if you had, but that's not what the experiment is. So, again, it's... He has absolutely no evidence that Stern-Gerlach has ever been done with electrons or protons. It's done with atoms. So he has no evidence at all that this experiment has ever been done, because I can't find it, frankly. It doesn't exist. It, it has never been done on monopoles. It's not an experiment that's been done on charged particles. It's been done on atoms. Right. And if it was neutral, it's just going to hit a particular place on the screen right in the middle. Right, and depending on the orientation of the magnet, though, the beam will be deflected, left, right, up, or down. Now, you it's an uneven magnetic field, okay? So one magnet's pointy, one, the other magnet's uh, the V. So one, one is a V into a V, so obviously it's not a, a, a consistent magnetic field. So depending on your position, you're in a, a different influence. You can use a device like this and many other things, basically setting up these fields such that you can measure the strength of the magnetic pole on the particles that you're sending through. All right, so this is this assumes so much. It's just atoms. He's saying we can measure the strength of the magnetic pole when all that matters is is what position was the atom in when it went into the experiment. If the atom if the atom's electron is facing up relative to the proton, if it has more uh, electron there, then it's going to uh, affect the atom by bending it down. And if it's the exact opposite, the, the, the proton side is more, uh, has, has uh, this, the top side has less electrons and the bottom side has more when it goes through, then it's going to go up. That's all. This isn't complicated. But they pretended it says something it doesn't say. And they'll always say that they're somehow measuring um, something other than ions. That's all that's going through the experiment, ions. No waves. Now they measure the magnetic field on these candidates for monopoles, and they find that one does exist, right? It doesn't go to that point, but it's bent 
based on the orientation of the magnetic field. No, based on the orientation of the atom. So again, more, this is just crap. Just crap. There's no evidence of any magnetic field. All right, there's just atoms in a magnetic field. So they've measured that things like the electron and the proton and even the neutron, which has no charge whatsoever, have magnetic fields. So again, he says they've measured it. There's no evidence they measured any such thing. All they did was move positive ions up, you know, atoms facing up, up, and they, move, they moved atoms facing down, down. That's all they did. And the atoms that went in straight, that is with their magnet north-south this way, go straight through. No surprise there either. So that's something we can see. Now they call that the spin just because they're trying to think how can a negative field, I mean a negative particle. All right, so we know that this is all just completely made up stuff because even the physicists don't agree on what this notion of a spin would even be. I'm sure there's physicists out there who know electrons aren't dipoles, so they can't be creating the positive that the atom creates. That it's got to be the protons influence that creates the change in the polarity of the atom is what's creating the change in the magnetic field. And the change in the magnetic field is just a change in the charge field. So again, all you have is electrons and protons to work with here. And they're making up this preposterous story that somehow they're measuring the electron by watching what atoms do. I mean, the extrapolation is incredible. The evidence isn't what he's saying it is. He sh instead of just showing what the, the simple little pattern you get, one goes up, one goes down, and some goes in the middle. That's all the pattern demonstrates. Some atoms go up, some atoms go down, and some go right through the middle. That's it. There's nothing else happening in this experiment. And yet he's extrapolating all of this data that doesn't exist. Have a magnetic field. It should just be a monopole pure negative. But they measure, they see, we see, a magnetic field. You didn't see any such thing, so just more horseshit. You saw nothing. You see a simple little, again, this is just like the two-slit experiment. You see a simple on-off pattern. You say it has to be wave interference because nothing else in the universe can create on-off. These are your assumptions being displayed, not some sort of fact being displayed. You want to convict and you're just saying that any indication that this guy's fingerprint is even close. Oh, look, it has some swirls in it. And, and all fingerprints have swirls, so his, his is a fingerprint and therefore he's guilty. I mean, it's, it's an insane extrapolation. Well, if you had negative particles, like, like an electron, let's take the electron has a negative particle. If it's going in a loop and they're all negative, that creates an electromagnet. Right, so if, if a ball... So he says so again. So this is more nonsense where they say somehow because it's moving, it's generating some new force. No, it's movement means it's moving the field. The charge is moving. Yes, the charge moving means something. It means it's going to be pushing in a direction. It has a clockwise direction or a counterclockwise direction. We already know that if I spin something, say, in water... Um, the water moves in one direction on one side and it moves in the other direction on the other side. And that if I change the rotation, I'll fundamentally change which direction the water flows. So obviously it matters, okay, if you start moving electrons, you will create forces that tend to move in a direction that the electron is moving. Of course. I mean... Yeah, I could do it with the sun. I could just make the sun process a little bit and the earth would be, you know, from the sunlight would be pushed a little out of its orbit, a little relaxed, a little out. It would be perturbed by the the fact that the, um, oh, well, that's a bad example because, <clears throat> yeah, you can't change the speed of light. Um, so I have to use some other example. But anyway, the, the idea is still there that if you're moving the field, you're changing its... Um, strength in the different locations. Well, the sun is a good example because obviously when it's moving one way, it would be redshifting, that is increasing the energy of the frequency. And as it's res residing, we're going back, we're going away from us, it would be diminishing it. So the light would all be turned into a little bit less intense light. So it does work as an allergy of charge the electrons a little tiny ball of charge and that charge is negative when it spins around it's creating a little electrical current 
says him, right? So it's it's creating a magical current that's never been detected. The magnets don't do this. None of, nothing does this. They've never proven there's anything moving around a static magnet. There's nothing moving around it. There's no evidence of any flow of anything. It's a dodge. It's a fake. It's a phony. They have no evidence of any force moving in those directions. And in the case of the neutron, the neutron is neutral overall, but inside it has negative and positive quarks. And if those are spinning, it creates a little... All right, so he's telling us more stuff that they've never proven any of this stuff. They have no photographs of a quark. There's no evidence, no, no substantial evidence for the existence of this nonsense. Electric current. And that electric current creates a tiny electromagnet. And so even in the case of these pure monopole style particles that you would want to think are monopole or nonpolar in the case of a neutron, I don't know if you want to call that. So these are just magical forces. Again, he's just turned the universe back into magic. The, the, the electron has a magical current it creates it and, and incites that current with a magical, just non-existent energy source. Where does the energy come from? Oh, he will not tell you that. Uh, uh, monopole having no charge. Since charge is involved inside of them of their construction, and that's moving, that's essentially in motion, it creates electromagnets. Now, the, it's just a metaphor because nobody thinks the electron, well, some people might think that, I kind of think this way, but uh, the scientists say they don't think that the electron's a little spinning thing and it would have to be spinning too fast and things like this. It would have to have two poles. So again, why are you turning something that's obviously not dipole into a dipole? Where's there any evidence that an electron has a positive side and a negative side? You created the antiparticle for the very purpose of saying it's the exact opposite of the electron. So what, does the antiparticle also have a positive end and a negative end? I mean, it's ludicrous mush. It's hard to figure out what size it is and do the geometric part of figuring out the size of that electromagnet. But remember, they're measuring on the outside what the strength of that electromagnet is. All right, so there's just no point here, right? Because if he's going to cite an experiment, it's going to be this. Well, I'll show you a piece of a Wikipedia page, and that's proof, isn't it, of the claims I'm going to make. So he's claiming he's measuring the electron spin by sending an atom through the stern gerlach device. And there's just absolutely no reason to think you're doing that. All you're doing is measuring the orientation of the atoms. That's it. There's nothing more special than the simple explanation is, is the atoms going into the device with an orientation. It has a polarization. It's an ion, let's say. So it's either a positive ion or a negative ion. So it's like this chalk. And if it goes through the device, if it goes into the device this way, it's going to go down. If it goes into the device this way, it's going to go up. And if it goes into the device this way, it's going to go straight through. That simple explanation explains the experiment. So what do you think is the truth? Do you think that simple explanation is the truth? Or do you think it's more likely that this complex explanation has this electron somehow doing magnetic, you know, spinning, and it's a dipole. The electron is actually a dipole, a magnetic dipole. And it's spinning around. And there's another proton thingy down here that's also some kind of dipole, I would presume. And that these things are all spinning around. And that somehow they're creating a whole bunch of swirly stuff in the ether. And somehow the stern gerlach is measuring how much swirly stuff is in the ether. <laughs> Shit. And they see that it's non-zero. It has a little polar shape, just like any magnet. Even though it's just an electron. Or it's just a positive proton. Or it's a neutral neutron. Alright, so whatever. Again, the neutron is already known that it degrades into a, a proton and an electron. So why, why are we confused about its neutrality? It's got charge 1 of negative. It's got charge 1 of positive mixed together in some form. Coming from the same location. Either the neutron is the electron and proton inside of each other in some way, you know, and therefore it just balances out. Or, like I said, spinning fast enough where you can't tell which end you're looking at at any one moment. And they call it spin just because, metaphorically, that's how you can imagine a pure charge creating a magnetic pole. I can't imagine it. I can't imagine it at all, how this spinning charge creates a goddamn thing. Why, why would spinning mean anything to it? Why would it spin? Why would it, where did it get the momentum in the first place? I can't imagine any of your physics. Why do these things move? How do they get from point A to point B? You have no explanation of it at all. 
You just say they're magically compelled by magical forces. The bending of their space, the whatever the fuck that means. Bent space. Doesn't mean anything in three dimensions, so there, it's right nonsense right on its face because your your explanation has to have three dimensionality. So explain what this bending is other than a convergence. Somehow matter sucks space is all you're saying. How does it do that? All right, so that's that. Oh, Quintika, oh, please, don't. Uh, I hope this isn't a hit job, Quintika. I'm just not into it anymore. Come on. Old colleagues here. Okay, I'm going to read them. Hey, Piero, I was just heading over to send you a hub. Oh, thank you. That's just so useful. Doing the live Let's Chat with the Retards session. I mean, it's so de disappointing that people are doing this, <laughs> this live thing where, you know, you can't talk to another human being. All you can do is talk to these little typers. And, you know, what a waste of time. Deep field video. I'll post it in your comments when you're done. Oh, that sounds great. This is what I was hoping for when I was hoping not to hope for the other thing. Quintika says Roger Penrose. Uh, Roger Penrose. Believe Lunatic. Uh, wacky little religious kook. That's it. Steve's there is some evidence to suggest that, that there was a universe before the Big Bang. You probably are up on that anyway. Well, thank you for saying that because no, I wasn't until recently, a few months ago, and I got back into. Like I said, so, so now they, they, they're so full of themselves, so full of their lies and their distortions and their perversions of reality. Now they think they can know what happened before the Big Bang. I mean, it's just so bad. I mean, they are so used to making up all these fake things, these holy ghosts and these fallen angels and they're just saying well let's make a fallen angel who actually has a broken leg uh yeah that's that's cool uh, uh let's make a fallen angel that you know had its penis inverted and thinks it's a girl okay let's do that seeing what was up with Penrose, and I found the Twister Theory, which goes way back, which I had heard of, but I hadn't really understood, and it's that whole idea, and I love it, the idea that the universe just keeps expanding, and then it gets so thin, like space itself. It <laughs> listen, listen to this, his enthusiasm, and oh, and, and the, then the Holy Ghost pops in, and, 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 and he's got lollipops for everyone. It's just such baby talk. Oh is because of the interactions of the particles and stuff. When it, space gets so thin that that interaction is basically non-existent, or maybe it's impossible, or maybe it's just... Uh, yeah, well, if you just make gravity a force, you can figure out this for yourself, that as objects get smaller, they're collecting pressure to do it, and that there would be an, then a lack of pressure in the field, and so then they would tend to get bigger again because there's less gravity. So gravity goes from being on the inside to being on the outside, to being on the inside to being on the outside. So galaxies are just doing this constantly over time. Yes, it's a viable theory. But you have to make it out of something real, not just say space does this and then space does that and then space goes to Walmart some threshold of near impossibility the size of space and the scale of things doesn't make sense anymore because the photons where you know time is stopped or however you want to put it don't care yeah time is stopped yeah that yeah, sure let's stop time too that'll be really cool oh how, how do you do that exactly <laughs> time stops so it's stop everything stops moving and everything stops having to take time to get somewhere and all you know time stops Sure, I'm sure that happens. Time stops. I'm sure the universe gets tired and it just says, I'm going to take a break for a few trillion years. You won't know the difference. It'd be just like Gary hitting the pause button. <laughs> yeah, you don't know how long that pause was, do you? I could have I could have had a whole bunch of life adventures, huh? Yeah. Oh, this is just so pathetic. I care about the size of space. It takes, from there point of view, uh, they go from one particle to another in an instant. Time is meaningless, scale is meaningless, space is meaningless, and so suddenly it's just sort of equivalent. Time is meaningless. All those little things kept wasting their time thinking time mattered when they took all this time to get somewhere. You know, that day you had the flu, or the virus, <laughs> yeah, um, you could have just skipped it, you know, by just eliminating that part of time. <laughs> yeah, sure you could have. To, as if everything was in one location again, and so you have the recreation of space and time, and then it just keeps expanding forever, but the scale keeps having a big a threshold at each Big Bang. And, uh, I, you know, it's, it's, 
It's pretty. So he can't explain how a magnet works. Can't explain how a charge is charged. Can't explain why protons and electrons are completely inverse in their reaction to a force. Can't explain any of it. And yet he can explain the beginnings of the universe. How credible is this conversation? Oh, that's right. It's all incredible. Uncredible. It's impossibly uncredible. Be crazy. I don't know that I believe it. He, he has a lot of ideas like he believes there's sort of a pure platonic mathematical universe. I do like the ideas. I think they're worth considering. It's hard to know what to make of it. But in this case, I think there might be something to how this abstract math of this concept of, I think it's a topology concept of... Oh, so this was just a complete waste of time. I mean, he couldn't even make a video where he could stay on his own subject. Aye. Um, scale and variance. You know, like an equilateral triangle is the same. It doesn't really matter what size you label the sides with. And so they're indistinguishable. And that there's things like that in mathematics where, you know, this effect that he's talking about could happen mathematically, but that might actually correlate to this. Right, right. And Feynman says mathematically I can make the whole universe out of one electron. So, you know, good night, mathematics. Then you're, it's silly. It's silly, that silly addicts. You know, it's not, it's not any kind of coherent, rational... Um, mechanism for modeling because you didn't put constraints on it. It's not rationally constrained. It's like saying I can make it a Tyrannosaurus and I can make it infinitely big. You know, I'll make it as big as Saturn. Yeah, and it'll walk around on the Earth, but it's as big as Saturn. <laughs> because mathematics says I can do it. Because I can draw it on a piece of paper. You know, I could draw a little, little Earth and I can have a big giant Tyrannosaurus on it. Therefore, it's possible. He's like, I could draw it. Math says I can do it. I mean, this is so fucking ignorant. Situation. I don't know. I, I could buy that. Um, I definitely don't like the idea of the Big Bang as we have it. Like, I would prefer a Big Bang that people don't even suggest. But, like, it's not really that the universe is expanding. It's more like stuff falls into black holes, gets tunneled back to the beginning of time. And so... It oh, brother. I mean, what... Yeah, what is the point? I mean, what the fuck is this crap things fall into black holes and tunnel somewhere i mean where is this grounded in anything called a fucking fact oh shit which is kind of you know recycling or whatever but um Yeah, the entropy cannot go on forever is one of the problems with that, right? But he's kind of saying, oh, entropy doesn't really matter because there's some... But the whole thing of the scale transition... Well, why don't you explain, like, why photons are twice as affected by gravity? So everything else isn't. Like magnetons and gravitons and all these other things, they're not affected twice as much by gravity. But gr light is. Are gravitons affected by gravitons? I mean, that's the, you know, the, the fundamental Newtonian theory of gravity basically says, no, the gravity doesn't interact with gravity. That actually has to get to the other object before it can affect the other object. The forces themselves can't bounce off each other. You actually have to hit something with the force. It's definitely like hard to impossible to imagine unless you're Penrose, but it's an interesting idea, though. All right, cheers. Nice to have a positive uh, interaction with you, Quintinka. I enjoy that. I remember when that used to happen all the time. Okay. Oh, Cheers. brother. Yeah, well, you're really a loser if you think that loser is going to help you out any. Oh, what a pathetic pile of crap. So depressing. I mean, people are just fucking insane. There's no, there's nothing else to say. You people belong in a fucking uh, institution, uh, you know, where you're beat over the head with facts and you're it's pointed out to you that no you're not a CIA agent no you you can't you know just draw something silly on a blackboard and then say because I drew it on a blackboard it's possible you can't do that kind of crap it's not science shithead it's not reasonable it's not anything within the scope of being connected to reality you can't walk into a courtroom and defend your client with some silly theory about how the invisible man is framing him. It's too fucking ridiculous. You have no evidence, retard. It's a frickin' story you're telling. Shit. Oh, God damn. 
really just so depressing i mean i'm really on the i'm on worse than the planet of the fucking apes i'm on the planet of the fucking it's not even the planet of the spongebobs it's whatever that starfish guy is what's that fucking starfish's name yeah that it's a planet full of wooey balloon chasing looney tunes fucking psycho patients Damn.